uh, Trade Talk TV. Today we've got Mark Connolly from Audience Science in the studio. Mark, thanks for coming in. No problem, sir. Mark is the MD of Europe and APAC for Audience Science, and today we're going to talk about the SaaS model versus the uh, traditional media buying model via the Lumascape. Obviously, Audience Science changed this model a little bit, so just give us a brief uh, overview of how you're sort of pivoted the company, or is pivot the right word? Um, Probably not the right word, but the, the, the business has been 13 years as a publisher-focused business, and we've been in the data industry for that time across the world, various markets. We've worked with various companies all over the world. That's a very safe and secure and uh, a growing business model. Mm -hmm. But with the technology that we have, with a DMP, a DSP, and all the third-party data that we have from the publishers that we work with, a couple of years ago, we decided to use that and start investigating other models and areas where we could actually expand. Yeah. And one of the interesting things, which I know we're going to come on to talk about, is the fact that we have a relatively unique opportunity to talk direct to publishers yeah. and offer a SaaS model rather than a Lumascape model, which, which you, you talked about. So mm -hmm. it's not that we're changing everything, it's actually that we're working side by side. So we continue to focus on our publisher business in all markets around the world, but we're also working directly now with a number of advertisers direct and not going through advertising agencies or through all of the stuff on the Lumascape, which uh, uh, other companies are doing. Okay, so let's just talk about that. I mean, now they, because obviously now you're, you you have a SaaS model in the true sense, software as a, as a service. Let's talk about like the, the black box that is the media buying ecosystem. Okay. So could you just give me, so an overview of that versus what you're trying to do uh, with the new yeah. model. So yeah. I think it's a, it's a right. mark. Um, I think what, one, of the, one of the things which is, uh, has really opened our eyes to the whole process is that increasingly a num uh, trade desks use various technologies. They use uh, normally one or two DMPs mm -hmm. and in a lot of cases four or five, six DSPs together. And that in itself causes problems because what you what you have you've got your DMP yeah. and then you've got your DSPs coming off the side of it. Yeah. But then there's data wastage between the two. And mm -hmm. if you want a frequency cap, for example, you can't do that holistically because you're actually just moving from one DSP to the next okay. DSP. There's also wastage in terms of the data transfer and all of the things that go with that, which just causes a huge amount of wastage. Mm. Now we've worked with a number of clients to actually investigate and qualify that, and that's how we came to the SaaS model that we're uh, software as a, as a solution opportunity for clients direct. Because what, what we found was that if you uh, did the analysis of this is 100% of your digital display budget, mm -hmm. we've worked with a number of clients now on, on doing some audits for them um, in various markets around the world. And what we've found is that on average, around 30% of the money that's invested in digital display including video and mobile advertising, actually gets where the advertiser wants it to go and makes becomes effective media spend. Okay. And what you've got in here is you've got frequency wastage, out of frequency capping, you've got data leakage, you've got um, arbitrage, which you know is, is the elephant in the room that a lot of people are talking about now, now that it's come to light that uh, a, a lot of companies and agency blocks are doing this. And mm. you know, it's a lot in the trade press now about various companies that are doing it. But what we've found is that you are wasting up to 70% of your digital budget not going onto areas where you actually want to target. So what we have done by working with um, a number of uh, large global, advertisers. large global advertisers in many markets around the world, mm. is that what we're able to do is make this much more effective for them. So if you, and, and by doing that in, in several ways, the first way is by having one DMP and one DSP, mm. eradicates all of the problems of, uh, mm. of leakage, data wastage, and everything else. By actually offering a real genuine frequency cap, because it's one straight line, and, yeah. and if, you want to, if you want to assume that this is the Lumascape chart, and you've got the, the client here, and you've got the publisher here, yeah. what we're doing, instead of going ad server, technology, date trade desk, data provider, blah, 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 is just providing that one straight route through. straight through the middle. The, the benefit of that and what, what, what happens and what we found, which is why we're working with a number of large global advertisers uh, on this, is that we're able to double the effective media that they have to, say, 60% of what it was before. So the commercial director is happy because the efficiency of his advertising is doubled. Mm -hmm. You then layer on the, the let's say, 10% media fee, the SaaS fee, 
I'm, I'm for, for audience science, yeah. and I'm, I'm conscious to say that that's not a percentage. That's a fixed fee. But yeah. for the scale of this this chart, what I'm trying to say is, it's a fixed fee. And again, that that's challenging the the, the traditional model because. If a, if a client spends a hundred million or a billion, it yeah. makes no difference. The fee that we charge is static. static. Is static. Whereas the other fees are dynamic. Uh, uh, exactly. Volume. Exactly. Right. And there's always a, a, a conflict of interest potentially in that particular model because the advertising agency will say, well, I took 5% and last year you spent a hundred million. Well, Mr. Advertiser, next year you need to spend 200 million. And that may be to, partly to the benefit of the, of the client, but additionally, it also means that the agency gets double the amount of money because of the revenue. Mm. We're saying that actually as a static cost, it actually is a lot more fair, it's a lot more transparent, and in most cases, if we double the revenue that we have to take through, our costs don't double because we don't have to take on that because of the economies of scale. So the, the first thing to say is that the effective media is doubled to mm. 60. Our cost goes on. You will always need the advertising agency as well for planning and buying. And if you think about the fact that we're not advocating that all advertising, digital display advertising, has to be programmatic. Mm. If you take 20% of the budget for brand awareness, etc., and you need homepage takeovers, sponsorships, etc., that needs to be done, brought, and, and managed by an advertising agency. They also need to do the planning and the, and the parameters on how you do the buying. But so, so there's a need for this. But the point I'm making is that from the, from the old model to the new model, what we're saying is that you could, the CMO's happy because you can double the effectiveness of, of his spend. The finance director's happy because now he's gone from 100% he spent last year to 75% with a 25% saving. The publishers are happy because they don't have to pay a, a rebate, a commission, or any other form of, of, of return to the advertising agency so in terms the of commission. the publisher gets more money effectively. From well, the, the, the publisher gets more money. If, if, if they sell it for a pound, they get, they get it for a pound. Yeah. They don't have to give a 10% rebate yeah. or whatever yeah. trade agreements in place. So that's the model that we have uh, adopted as our model to move forward, and that's why we're working with a large number of clients in multi-markets to actually emphasize this and discuss this. It's really against t the typical model, so it must be causing a little bit of uh, controversy in the ecosystem. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, it is challenging. It is a, it is a disruptive model. Mm. But the, the thing to say on that is that we are not advocating in any way, shape or form that agencies are to blame. Mm. We're not advocating that agencies are wrong. We are not advocating that they are misleading or false or, or doing anything fraudulent. All that we are saying is that the... And, and I'm learning specifically from this. If you put £100 million pounds of advertising revenue, global advertising revenue into the into the traditional model and only 30 million comes out of it, somewhere along the lines, the whole process has forgotten that this is the client's money. And therefore, the, the, the opportunity of what we're doing is to bypass that and say, actually, that model in some cases works for some clients, but in most cases, when you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on digital advertising on a global basis, we're able to provide this model, provide economies of scale, provide better targeting and reporting and analytics on the money that we spend programmatically, but we're also able to say to the advertisers, you save money, but double your efficiency as well. Well, it's sort of good for the publishers as well, who can see more sort of increased uh, value, because there's more money being spent on actual media as opposed to... Uh... Co correct, but then if you actually take it one stage even further, that actually benefits the end consumer, because the... Advertising is, is, is targeted because we use our third-party data, which we've had as our, uh, uh, our base for the last 13 years. But additionally, because the, because the publishers are making the revenue that they expect for the inventory that they're selling, mm. it means they can invest more now than they did before into actual the quality of the inventory on the site, which obviously gets stickiness and you get more people coming back. So the, but by, by moving to this model, virtually every single person in the whole ecosystem is happy with what we're trying to do. It's mm. a lot cleaner, it's a lot mm. more straight, it's a lot more direct. So, um, you obviously are working with some, level, some really big global clients, and in each country they actually have an agency that works with them. So how does that relationship with the agency work with now, you being sort of the platform of choice and the almost like the auditing sort of uh, arm of the process? How does that work and how does how does it you well, want to go? I, I don't want to get into specifics because I think it would be inappropriate to, to say that, and it differs in each market. Yeah. And that, that's actually an important thing to say. But in, on the whole, this is a not a deliberately a disruptive model, yeah. but it is a model which is challenging the, the norms of how the advertising industry 
from the creative agency through, through to the planning agency, the buying agency, to the to, to, to the even you know the trade desk technologies mm. and the ad servers themselves, mm. even to the publishers, because the publishers are saying to us, well, we'd, we'd look, we really want you to spend this money on, on our website. Um, we'll give you a 10% rebate. And we're saying, well, we don't need to take that rebate yeah. because we're charging a fixed fee. Yeah. What we will do is we will put our advertising on your website or your network or it's your exchange it, on its merit. Yeah. If, if it is the right advertising environment for the advertiser we're working with at the right price at the right time, then our advertising will go on there. So if the environment's right, we'll actually be on there. So that's the way it's challenging. But from, from to answer your question directly, how is it working with the advertising agencies? It's a learning curve for us. It's a learning curve for the advertising agencies. Mm. But in the main, we have found that all of the advertising agencies that we work with on a global basis are working with us, supporting us, and helping us what they do. Because at the end of the day, everybody wants the client to be happy and mm. everybody wants the client to spend the money. So if you, if you start from that point of view and that's what you're trying to achieve, then everybody finds their own path on how they do that together. Okay, so there you have it. Software as a solution, not as a server, sorry. Uh, coming to a brand new you. Mark, thank you very much for coming in today. No worries, it was great. Thanks very much for your time. And that was Straight Talk TV, thank you.